Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here. What's your temperature? <laughs> I want to talk about basal body temperature and its use for predicting thyroid disease. Now, this comes to us from the work of Dr. Broda Barnes. He was a researcher that practiced medicine for quite a while back, and he saw transitions in medicine relative to how thyroid disease was understood and diagnosed. And he did a good job in focusing on some older core concepts and not getting too caught up in some new fads. But he talked about some other ways of diagnosing because he saw a lot of the shortcomings of the newer blood tests. Over the course of his tenure in medicine, many blood tests were proposed to track thyroid disease, but none were very accurate. This was before they had even things like TSH, free T3, free T4. And the tests of the day were not very relevant. Believe it or not, cholesterol was actually first used as a blood test for thyroid disease because there was some association. In the very distant past, they would measure basal metabolic rate or basal body temperature. And that was done by you know, temperature under your mouth, rectal temperature, or axillary armpit temperature. And the truth is that at the extremes of thyroid function, yes, your, your thyroid often does cause changes in body temperature. If you're very hyperthyroid, like hyperthyroid storm, the temperature may run higher. And in the extremes of low thyroid state, like myxedema coma, the temperature also runs lower. Now Barnes thought about this and he argued that between those extremes, temperature was strongly associated with thyroid status. In fact, he argued that your basal body temperature shouldn't be outside of the range of 97.8 to 98.2. So this was a range of about like 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty tight. <laughs> And he argued that between outside of those, the higher you were, the more you were thyrotoxic, and the lower you were, the more you were hypothyroid. And that simple tool alone could be used to gauge your thyroid status. If your temperature was low, you would then take thyroid. He would encourage taking thyroid medication until you got up to the range. And you could take more and more and more until you got above the range. So how is that idea borne out? And how about the accuracy of just body temperature in general and the relevance of thyroid status to, to, to temperature. You've heard about 98.6. It's almost like a, a, a meme or a legend or an idea that we don't even think about. Like, what's your temperature supposed to be? Oh, 98.6. So that came from a large number of data points back in the 1900s. <laughs> and this was a German physician, uh, Enderlich, I believe, that analyzed many people and made this number as an average. Now, in his work, he never said this was really where you're supposed to be. He just argued that as an average for a big population. There was a more recent study done by the Journal of American Medical Association, and they showed that the average is probably lower than that. But not only that, within the range, healthy people can be all over the place. So people can be in the lower 90s, the upper 90s, the low 100s, and have no problems. No fevers, no infection, no thyroid disease. So the distribution of temperature in the healthy population is way, way, way broader than 97.8 to 98.2. And if we call that the defining factor of thyroid disease, probably 98% of the population would be thought to be way off in thyroid status. Like no one would ever be right because few are in that range. So now the other question is, is your thyroid the main regulator of basal body temperature? Uh, we know this from modern physiology, it's one of many, but it is not the main one. We think a lot about many other hormones and messenger molecules. We've got leptin, epinephrine, norepinephrine, cytokines, and also many other factors like season, time of day, diet, menstrual factors, circadian variations. So these are all players besides just the thyroid. Then the question is, does your thyroid status have a linear relationship in that range? And this has been studied. So in a group of trauma patients, they studied axillary temperatures correlated with thyroid scores from current accurate tests. And almost everyone, almost 90% of people, were outside of Barnes's range. But those that had thyroid abnormalities, there was not a relationship between that and their blood pressure. So it didn't predict it in those groups. Then the question is, are you only thyroid toxic when your temperature goes up? In other words, is it safe to take more thyroid medication until your temperature elevates above 98.2. And unfortunately, that's not, that's not true. So with hyperthyroidism, there's one version called thyrotoxic storm. And that is so bad. That is literally emergency room, barely gonna make it. And in some cases of hyperthyroid storm, a fever shows up, 
but it's not that when your thyroid dose gets higher, you make a steady track up towards hyperthyroid storm before it goes over the edge. So big picture, basal body temperature was a useful thing from history. It is a helpful way to track fertility and menstrual changes, your menstrual cycle. You can see shifts in that, but not a helpful tool for thyroid status. Please check out references and please know that your temperature is important, but not everyone has a high one, even if they're healthy. And you can't rely on it alone to say if your thyroid dose is safe or not. Dr. Christensen here with you. Take great care. We'll talk more really soon. Bye-bye.